Th this is so exciting because it's actual evidence of behavior. We don't have to infer from bones what the function was. We can just see it here. This is uh, exactly like walking on a beach or seeing your footprints on the wet bathroom floor. Uh, we can tell what was happening. It's a snapshot in time. And you can just imagine them walking across this ash-covered uh, plain, very much like we would walk today. The identity of this creature was finally confirmed when they found a skeleton from that time, which seemed part ape and part human, called Australopithecus. This is one of the best Australopithecine skulls we have. And if you actually saw this, it would have looked very chimpanzee-like. Uh, the brain's fairly small, just marginally larger than a chimpanzee. The, the, the Australopithecines had a fairly projecting face, but the nose was quite flat. It would have been a very ape-like or chimpanzee-like nose. One of the giveaways, though, that it wasn't a chimpanzee is that the foramen magnum, the hole through which the spinal cord enters the brain, is positioned underneath the skull. So the skull would have balanced on the spinal uh, column. And this is a characteristic of a biped. So the, the, this individual, even though it superficially looked chimpanzee-like, would have walked on two legs and would have been on the human line. The skeleton and footprints provided evidence for the Walking with Beasts animators to build Australopithecus. But with no creature alive today, it took a lot of advice from scientists before the animators could get one moving. One of the things that I just don't think is going to work about this one is just simply the fact that it's so bent over I and mean, its its legs are never straightening up. That if you imagine, well, yeah, exactly. If you try and walk like that, yeah, it's never going to do that. In any, no, any so you, you'll, you'll get two you'll get two foot down the road. I mean, if you imagine it, if you to stand up and actually stand like that for any period of time. It's yeah. such sort of hard work to, to get anywhere, basically, from, from doing this. Mm -hmm. It's by the time you get down here, I can already start to feel it in my thighs, you know? It's just, I don't believe that's going to walk at all. That's, that's a good amazing. posture. <laughs> <laughs> it's strangely natural, I think, isn't it? It's attractive. The, the first one I started was um, this walk here. Um, my initial impression was to go with a very chimp-like walk. Um, because it just felt like, let, let's try that first, let's we say. And then moved on to basically just, um, just bringing in more vertical, more upright. These are all fairly rough animations, just trying to get the idea for it. This is almost um, believable in that it's more upright and it's got the, the basic timings of, of, of a bipedal walk on it. But again, you're looking at the, there's an awful lot of movement going into getting these legs forward which is, again, very, very inefficient. This was when we were, um, this stage was when I was trying the alternatives, um, shoulder and hip timings that the, the scientists had advised us on. Again, it, it, it's almost there, but it feels uncomfortable. There's a lot of effort going into each footstep. Um, it looks like it's almost pulling its feet out of mud there, really. It's, like it's, it's got sticky feet, for example. Um, and then from that one to what is the finalized one? which, although not put in, um, doesn't look terribly chimpanzee or ape-like, um, but and again, also doesn't look perfectly human, so there's some, it's somewhere in between the two. But at the same time, it doesn't look like it's putting a great deal of effort into getting anywhere, which is the whole idea of a walk.